Welcome back to the show. My next guest uh, wearing a different hat today. He just joined us a few weeks ago talking about the Rotary Club Ottawa South Golf Tournament, which was a tremendous success. But um, during that conversation with him before and, and after the show, I, I found out that he was actually an energy consultant and he is with uh, Exicon Roofing and Solar and wanted to have you back here to talk a little bit about that, Chris. Um, let's first of all, tell me a little bit about Exicon, uh, a little bit of the history of the company. Thanks for having me back, Derek. Oh, pleasure. Uh, Exicon Roofing and Solar has been installed installing solar systems throughout Ontario, uh, mostly eastern Ontario for the last 15, well 13 years since Dalton McGinty shut down the coal fire plants in Ontario to right. uh, alleviate smog uh, in Toronto, which right now uh, obviously is a, a big issue. Uh, but do both uh, roof, the roof side of things as well as the solar installation. Uh, guide people through the process of uh, evaluating whether or not it's a good fit. Uh, so looking at different things like uh, the amount of electricity that the house is consuming, the people inside are consuming. Right. Um, looking at any type of uh, shaling, uh, shading issues as far as trees or other obstructions, other buildings, other homes. Uh, then generating a proposal uh, based on gathering that information that speaks to the net present value, internal rate of return, levelized cost of electricity, right. and return on investment. Yeah, and I think you know the uh, two things often come to mind when I when when I have these conversations with other people is uh, affordability and feasibility. And some people have in their mind, well, wait a minute, we're in a climate where it snows quite often. I'm going to put you know a solar panel on on my roof. M maybe you can sort of speak a little bit to that, Chris, and then, then we'll get to feasibility. Yeah, the the, the misnomers sorry, around that the, the misnomers around that are, are uh, great. So I do a lot of uh, dispelling myths on yeah. a regular basis. And what people are actually doing is they're 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 inflation proofing their home, right? Okay. So they're people feel powerless to both climate change as well as inflation. And when you start producing your own electricity locally and consuming it locally, then not only are you doing something good for the planet, but you're making sure that you're mitigating the rising costs of electricity and everything that's being powered by electricity. Right. So if you're thinking about in getting an electric vehicle or installing an air source heat pump, all these different things that are going to use electricity and you're concerned about your hydro bill, then install a solar system, produce it yourself, alleviate all of that anxiety, and uh, help mitigate climate change at the exact same time. What, what is the return on investment? Because, you know, if, if I go back 20 years ago and I was having these conversations, people would say, well, it'll pay for itself in 35 years, right? And people looked at themselves and said, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be around in, in 35 years or living in this home. What's the, what's the ROI on, on these now? So it used to be a, a strictly an environmental project. Yes. Uh, but from 2011 until 2016, approximately, Approximately, uh, panels for solar at uh, the price for solar panels dropped by 90% globally. So around 2016, uh, 2016 in Ontario, it became more affordable to produce your own electricity and consume your own electricity than simply pull it, pulling it from the grid. Okay. The return on investment aspect, if you just look at it from a straight savings um, point of view off of your hydro bill. Uh, that's going to happen anywhere from year 9 to year 15, depending on the different mm. circumstances. Right. The uh, system itself, the manufacturer's warranties for 25 years, it's expected to last closer to 40. Uh, but there's now government programs that will provide both access to capital as well as grants to reduce the overall cost. So a lot of people see the return on investment happening the day after uh, the solar system gets turned on. Do up. you help then walk people through that, that process, the, the government loans and grants that, that are available? Yeah, you, the, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is do what's called an energy audit for your home. Right. So you hire a company like uh, Home Soul Building Solutions or Enviro Center. Okay. They'll come and do an energy audit. They'll assess the building envelope. 
They'll give you some recommendations as far as energy efficiency for the home. With that document, as well as a proposal from us, you're now qualifying for capital from either uh, the City of Ottawa or the federal government. And after the process is completed, it then becomes a simple diversion of funds from what you would have spent on your utility. Right. Now you're paying off that low interest or interest-free loan and you get to add an asset to the house, uh, which helps with the resale value. And again, at the same time, helping mitigate climate change, which what we're, see what we're seeing right now is uh, in-your-face climate change. Yeah, yeah. That in other parts of the world, like Australia and California, they've been dealing with for a long time. And the uptake of solar installation in those two areas, as well as others, is it's happened a lot faster. And when you have in your face climate change, like the Ottawa River flood, like, you know, we're having 100 year floods every couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, those types of in your face climate change things, that, that, that's a motivator for people. And what Exacon does, we empower people that otherwise feel hopeless to climate change and inflation to help themselves. What about in the winter? What happens when, you know, snow covers one of these solar panels? Um, are, are, you still, are you still producing energy from those? So leave it alone. Don't do anything. Okay. There's two things that will require operations and maintenance for a residential solar system. One is a squirrel. So okay. wrap it in Critter Guard. Yeah. The other one's a human being. So stay away from it. Okay. What people are doing is they're utilizing what's called net metering where during good generation times of year, you're overproducing, okay. you're sending excess uh, electricity to the grid, you get a credit for that through your hydrometer that you're using during non-daylight hours and during the times of year where the system's covered in snow. So you're basically storing it, well, they're storing it for you, you're, you're selling it back? Is so that It's being used by your neighbors, okay. who are also okay. then benefiting from renewables, Right. but you're getting credit for it through your hydrometer. So think of it like having a bank account with Hydro Ottawa, okay? Right. So during daylight hours, you're making deposits. During non-daylight hours, you're making withdrawal. And as we go through the process initially, where we're assessing the feasibility of the project, we're determining what your bank book is going to look like with Hydro Ottawa. Great way to put it. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. We'll be right back after this.